What's up, guys? It's Coach Grant with First Down Training. And today we're going to be breaking down some of Cornell Powell's route running ability. Okay, so we're going to be talking about three routes from the Senior Bowl that he ran. We're going to be talking about how you guys can run a comeback, how you guys can run a slant route with inside leverage press, and then we're going to be talking about a dig against press coverage. But first things first, fellas, I want to talk to you about our 28-day wide receiver gym plan. If you check out that very first link in the description, we're having a $10 off sale, right? So $10 off sale on this program alone ends today at midnight. So check out that very first link in the description if you want a specific 28 days worth of plan for wide receiver in the gym, what they need to be able to do in the gym, how they can get more explosive, better route runner based on the exercises that we give you and exercises to improve your hands. So again, check out that link in the description. Very first one, $10 off wide receiver gym program. Hope to get you guys on that soon. Let's get started. So first route we're going to be looking at here is he kind of gives this little split release and is going to be running a comeback route. Okay, so we're going to be talking about how you guys can get some separation on a comeback and what you need to do to be able to get this DB to turn his hips, right? So, well, this is actually more so, wouldn't call this like necessarily a split release. The next two clips are going to be off of a split, but this is more like a kind of a squirt release, a little hesitation hop. DB's inside shade, right? So if I'm running a comeback route, the most important thing is that I don't want to force, I don't want to just run straight to the outside, allow this DB to get hands, and then have him force me to the sideline and get me out of bounds, right? Because that's a very tough throw for the quarterback. The most important thing is you want to be able to kind of stay on your alignment, stay at the top of these numbers, and then be able to break it off and get to the sideline. So you see how he gives a little hesitation hop. Now what that's for is to keep this DB, to kind of threaten him to the inside, right? Because he's inside shade, so what does he not want to give up? He doesn't want to give up anything across his face. He doesn't want to let Powell just run right over here, run a drag, run a quick slant. That's why he's inside shade. But we want to create some space from the sideline. So we want to attack his leverage off the line, get that little hesitation hop. Now I know you see here that he's just got to beat his outside arm. If we can get that DB lean into the to the inside just a hair or maybe a little bit flat, footed we know just to beat his outside arm that's how we get this outside release you don't need to mess around with this arm we just beat that outside arm even if he's able to recover like he does i'm still off a of press i'm still keeping my alignment now i'm working to get back over the top when you guys could work to get back over the top that's going to force his db to really turn his hips and run with you right so i get back over the top i force him here now powell does a great job of selling this route with a peak back technique so this is a great thing that you guys can do when you're trying to run a comeback or any kind of outside breaking route to really get that db to bite right because you see this db's eyes are high DB should be kind of more focused on his hips, more focused on that, like, kind of, I wouldn't necessarily say torso, but he shouldn't be looking high. If you're a DB and you're watching this, shoulders will lie and your head will lie, okay? Shoulders of a receiver will lie, head of a receiver will lie, right? But this is something that receivers can do, especially when you maybe get a, dis a DB who's maybe a little bit undisciplined on this certain, this particular play, right? We look back with those eyes to really sell vertical, right? Really sell like this ball is just going to be dropped in, but I got to combine that peak back with great pad level and great speed. Those are the three things that you need to have on this because if you, a lot of guys will peek back but then they lean back and they straighten up their back they lean back their st steps get super choppy they reach out in front of them right we want to make sure that i keep a good pad level good stride i'm driving my arms driving my legs that's what you got that's how you sell the peek back because then when i peek back i could just drop right on a dime you see how his chest is going forward he's getting that chin to his knees dropping in an explosive position now he's dropping on that outside leg right when you guys drop on that outside leg that that's necessarily like I'm not one, me personally, when I come back, what I teach my receivers is that we snap with that inside leg, right? We snap with the inside leg. We try to get out in three, three to five steps. That's the goal, right? If you snap with that outside leg on a comeback in this situation, we're going to be taking four steps. A lot of people think that you can just go one, two and be out in two steps. That's impossible to do if you guys are selling vertical, right? Uh, on a 45 degree break, that is impossible to do if you guys are running full speed and trying to get this DB to commit his hip. So it's going to have to be four steps if you go with that outside leg. I'm not saying it's wrong. It's more so about cutting out time at the top of the break. Rather than cutting out steps, and it's more so about being balanced so you can explode back to this ball than it is to be able to get out in two and pop up straight nice and tall and drift out of there and have no balance, right? So I would say it's more important to cut out time, not necessarily worry about what leg to go off of, right? So it's about cutting out time, being in an explosive position, dropping before this DB has time to react, right? So he's in this low position right here. So you see snaps, two, three, four, and that third and that fourth step, you see how he pivots himself and he hooks around, right? That's what's going to be able to drive him back down on this 45 because he got his hips turned now and the low man's going to win whoever gets lower verse whoever gets lower faster and more explosion with their drop of their hips is going to get out of the break faster and you see how the db's real high he's got to be able to react to it he's nice and tall so he gets stuck right he doesn't have as much burst because he didn't get low and i get low now what i can do is i can pump my arms i can drive my legs and run back to this ball and come back to this thing great job by powell getting separation on this i know that's a lot a lot of little details go into that comeback route but it's so important that when you guys work that peak back you guys sell and fade 
there's so many different variables to play into to make sure that it's a crisp route because everybody loves to do the peek back. DBs are expecting that. They see you look, they see you look back for the ball, but you raise your pad level up and you start chopping your feet. The problem with that is the DB, that's an indicator. That's an indicator that you're going to make a break. It's all about being a salesman, creating energy at the top, using that energy to accelerate you out of this break. Let's watch this thing again full speed one more time. Great job kind of moving him off that platform with that squirt release or that hesitation hop. Snap this thing off. Make sure I accelerate back to the ball. Great route. Okay, so now we're going to be looking at this kind of diamond release here. Off a split release, right? So he's going to split, attack this 45, and get that DB to turn his hip. So let's watch this thing full speed. So he splits, attacks the 45, breaks this thing off, and then accelerates. So that's another big key that we're going to be focusing on right here, right? Three phases to every route. You got the stem, you got the break point, you got the acceleration. In this case, the stem would be the release, right? So you see when he comes off here, he gives this like kind of DB again, inside shade, right? And I got to run a slant route. So what do I not want to do? I don't want to force this thing. I don't want to force the slant route. I'm going to kind of give him a little split release to see maybe if he jumps outside, then I can just take the inside of him. He's taking away the inside. First step comes here. Okay, fine. Let's attack this 45 on a diamond release to get him to turn his hips, right? So he gives this little split. And then what is it? One, two, three. Right now, it's so important that when you guys work this diamond release, right? And what is a diamond release? A diamond release is where you attack on a 45 degree angle when a DB's inside shade and you got to run a slam, right? It takes a little bit too long to do a diamond release on really anything else. You kind of do like a diamond one, two if you're running a fade, right? But if you do a diamond release, then try to go run a dig, right? It, it might not, it might not time up correctly, right? It depends a lot on what read you are of the play, right? But where first read slant, this is something that I can 100% go with. You split, you attack for three steps. But those three steps got to be explosive steps. You got to commit your shoulders and you got to commit your hips because that's what the DB is going to be looking at, right? If you guys are here and you guys, everybody loves to do this diamond release, but what they'll do is they'll take three steps and they don't go anywhere. They'll take three choppy steps. Their pad level will be high. They'll lean back. If they're going to throw by on this DB, they'll reach. DB probably could have stayed a little bit more disciplined. Obviously, I know that's what everybody will say, just not to not open up the gate too quick. But the thing that I'm trying to get at is that we want to make that DB open up his gate. There comes a point where he's got to eventually turn and run with me and if I sell with my pad level I sell with speed I sell with body language that will eventually he can't shuffle with us down the field he can't shuffle with us if we're selling if we're running a fade he cannot shuffle with us for 30 yards right so let's make him believe fade that's what gets him to open up that gate that's what will get him to, to turn his hips now what what allows him to play this well and not turn his hips is when a receiver has an indicator when he pops his chest up when he slows down when he doesn't take full three steps that's what I'm getting at right here fellas so make sure it's a full three step as we break this thing off now you see what is he doing he's opening up those hips he knows he got beat he's driving on this thing so what do i have to do from the break point to the win of the race right that 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 point where you catch the ball it's like you're racing to that spot with this db break point you create energy with your legs hips whatever it is then you drive out of there and you got to pump those arms and accelerate because it is a race to this spot this is Perfect. This is fine separation right here because of the situation, right? Man coverage, slant route, everything. Maybe you're running this thing in tight in the goal line, whatever it is. That's plenty of separation. You're wide ass open at this level of football with that kind of separation, right? So make sure we make this DB believe it because the easy answer is, oh, he should have just stayed patient and watched his hips, right? But he don't know what route we're running. It's easy to say that from the outside looking in, saying like, oh, he should have just opened up his hips because you know the route, right? If you don't know this route and it's so hard to not open up your hips and commit to the fade that's why db is so hard if we sell it correctly fellas so that's what we got to make sure that we're doing off the line anytime we're working kind of a diamond release we got to sell vertical because that's what'll make him do it make him believe fade commit with my hips commit with my shoulders and explode out to that side so now we're going to be looking at this kind of um Split release here, inside release going to be running a dig, okay? So now let's watch this thing full speed. So he gives this little split, takes the inside release, kind of gives a little head and shoulder, like not so much a lean, but breaks this thing off and accelerates and is able to make this play. So a couple of different things I want to talk about here, right? This DB is more so head up, right? So this split release, I could go kind of either way, right? I split him here, and you see how this DB kind of stays square, stays head up. Okay, so I'm going to push off of this leg, work those hands, make sure I have a plan with these hands to swat that DB's hands off if he decides to get physical because I know I want to take the inside release, so I just need to swat this inside arm. But if he's not going to get hands, that's fine. Let's work up and get to this route. Let's be physical and let's be and let's get and let's get up. Let's get up to the top of this break. Let's get up to the depth of this thing. Now you see when he's able to break this thing off right in stride, it's just like a single grown man plant dig or this one cut dig. Right. The thing about this is we don't want to have any indicators, just like I was talking about. We're going to briefly touch on this because it's just a different kind of cut, right? But you want to be in stride anytime you're making this kind of speed cut heavy 
heavy indicator cut, grown man plant. There are a lot of different names for it, but we want to be in stride. We want to make sure that we're selling vertical, and the only way I'm able to change direction while I'm selling vertical is by being sudden with that foot, right? Because again, the suddenness of your break will force a reaction off this DB, but also the suddenness of your break will give you explosion. And the only way you're able to change direction from selling vertical when it's just a single hard cut is by being violent with it, being sudden. You want to just have a sudden drop right in the grass and then be able to create some energy and explode off of this thing. Now, this catch in traffic right here, you see ball's a little bit behind. When we secure this thing, again, your eyes, you almost want to think of this thing like you're catching in a picture frame, right? Like a picture frame, you have that sitting on your table, dining room table, whatever. There's only one thing in that frame, right? If it's like a portrait. That's how you want to think of that football with your eyes. There's only one thing in your line of vision, and that's that football. It's not the line, it's not the football, and then the stands, not the football, then the defender. It's just the football. That split second, you got to be in that picture frame, right? Now, when he secures it, you say he rips away. He's here, violent to the tuck. That's so this guy doesn't make a play on it and have any chance for a PBU, especially over the middle. Always getting in good habits, even when we're in just a one-on-one -on -one situation. I don't want to be catching this thing and holding it out there because over the middle, you know there's a lot of threats. So let's catch this thing. Let's be violent to the tuck. Rip it away and make sure I secure it. Let's watch this thing again full speed one more time. Great route here by Powell. Getting some separation. Great job using that split release and then breaking this thing off and making this play over the middle. All right, guys. I really want to thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. Again, if you guys want a $10 off wide receiver gym plan, right? $10 off sale. Only having it today on this specific product, right? Ends at midnight. Check out that very first link in the description. If you guys have any questions at all, leave those in the comments. I'll get back to you as soon as possible. I'll see you guys next time.